what is going on everybody nameless here and i'm back with another video i gotta say thank you guys for showing love in the last video i was three months uh till my last upload and i uploaded yesterday i thought we were gonna get like 200 likes 3,000 views something like that which i would have been extremely grateful for but we blasted through that we got over 11,000 views in 24 hours over 500 likes so you guys are absolutely amazing make sure you guys leave a like on these videos if you're enjoying it it helps a lot and let's see if we can get even more on this one but I've done some more research. I've been on the Reddit. I've been, you know, just looking at everything. So I got some more opinions now that I've been uh, figuring some more things out. We're going to kind of just go through all of it. Uh, we're going to talk about Formal's retirement. We're going to talk about the potential Optic Dallas merger. And we're just going to talk about some other roster mania things. But first things first, you guys see this wonderful chair behind me that I'm using? This chair is amazing. Now, you know that this chair is amazing because prior to this, I was using another chair that I thought was incredible, and I made the switch to use this one because it's even better. Now, this is the Razer Isker. I'm gonna get up and show you guys the cool technology with this, but obviously on the handles, you can get up, you can sit down, super easy, super easy. And there's a thing right here to go left and right. And then the craziest thing about this chair and what I think is the most special is if you see this right here, this actually leans out for lumbar support. So you know as a gamer, what's the most difficult thing is when you're trying to sit down and you have no support right here for your back. So for me, on this, I can click a button right here on the right and the lumbar support comes out because I like to kind of sit up when I play, but I don't slouch, like I kind of slouch, so I don't sit perfectly straight up. So it's nice to, to have this support. As you can see, it comes out. So when you're sitting down, it supports your back, guys. So here, check this out. So as you can see, I kind of sit like this when I'm gaming and it just feels nice, man. So if you guys want to get some back support, you want to feel better, the Razer Isker is for you. The link will be in the description below. Go ahead and check it out. All right, guys. So let's start this video out just kind of going through the Reddit, uh, seeing sort of some of the updates and things that have been going on. The Reddit has been on absolute fire lately. So let's check it out. So let's roll the tape on this clip and see what uh, Crim6 basically said. So you were really? switching time? Yeah, yeah. But then the, there's, there's. let's just say this. I'm not going to say who it is. Mm -hmm. who I think number one is, and I think the whole league would agree. But let's just say the fucking irony in this situation. Because I, in my opinion, I got dropped for the number one torture. Mm -mm. So you're saying and, that someone on your team isn't uh, And and uh, like, let's just say, uh, I'm sitting there like, nah, you just straight up think I fucking suck, homie. Like, <laughs> okay. you know I what mean, I mean? Like, yeah, like, I mean, uh, yeah, they shouldn't be saying, like, you know, okay, you torched. Whatever. So like, you know, yeah. I think there's a lot more that goes into that, you know? Yeah, no, for no sure. exactly. I was sitting there like, dude, don't give me some that bullshit reason. Like, that's yeah. not the fucking reason. Yeah. But okay. Yeah. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Well, let's get into the next question. Okay, so basically saying they told him he got dropped because he was torching time and scrims, but then he's saying he got dropped for the ultimate torture. Now he leaves that up for like question who that people think it is. Um, and you can see in the chat what people are saying. It has to be dashy, et cetera. Uh, which is what I thought immediately that it was it was gonna be dashy, uh, because I heard that he tortures time when it comes to scrims and things like that. Um but yeah, I mean, like I said, yeah, this basically confirms the Optic Dallas merger, which I think is is crazy, man. I've seen a lot of posts about it, so I guess we'll talk about that one first. Um, if Optic and Dallas merge, like what that means for Call of Duty, that means that there's a league spot up for grabs, which I've heard some rumors about some people getting another league spot. I obviously can't go into details about that, but it's a rumor that I've heard coming around. And remember, guys, I get the same information that you guys do, right? Maybe just a with a little bit of sprinkle of, of more info on top. But like I said, I don't go around asking people for info and stuff like that because then I wouldn't be able to make these videos because I would for sure know. Um, but yeah, uh, I have heard a rumor that there's a, there's going to be somebody coming in and getting a spot. Um, and then thinking about the Optic Dallas merger, I mean, I think it's pretty good uh, going forward. Uh, you think about Hastro and Hex when they had Eon. This isn't the first time that they've merged their organizations. There was an organization, well, a team called Eon back in the day, which was Envy and Optic and Black Ops 1, where they were all under one, one team sponsored by the same sponsors. And it worked out pretty well. And then somewhere along the lines, they ended up splitting up. So this is an idea that has happened before that worked very well. Um, so... I think that there's a lot of potential here. You put those two guys together, they're going to make magic happen. If Hastro and Hex are working side by side, I think 
it's gonna be unbelievable uh, obviously i think ha hastro is probably a little bit better at building rosters and things like that and hex is better at the marketing side of things um not to say hex hasn't done a good job of building rosters but he really hasn't had to do too much in that regard because he's had players to make that decision for him and now it's at a time where optic the players are no longer able to make those decisions uh and it, it just hasn't been working out for them so looking at Astro, who has done a good job year in, year out of vetting the new talent, finding rosters and building it and creating them into winning teams. I think this is a very good combination and uh, good for the future of Call of Duty. And now to talk about their their uh, projected roster. Um, what was it? I saw uh, it was like Shotzi, Illy, Dashy and Skump. Um, I think that team can be extremely good. Uh, the one weird thing to me is just the dashy play. Uh, I would have liked Krim instead of dashy. I think Krim is unequivocally better than dashy. Uh, dashy probably has a better shot and things like that. But when you have such a talented team like that, do you really need a guy who like Krim is not like he still has a good shot. He can still gun any of the players in the league. You really need another ace on your squad. I like to call them aces. The guys who can just go out there and, and dominate. Shout out to Ted Lasso. Um, do you really need four aces? I mean, I guess some people do think that phases instilled that in them. I'm still under the belief that like you need to have, you know, your super talented SMGs. You can have an intelligent veteran player who still has the gunny. It might not be super gunny, but like Krim is at that level where he's going to turn up when you need him. I just think it would have worked out better, but we'll see. Maybe they'll prove me wrong. Either way, the settles team is going to be pretty solid. They will. If that's a team, they will be a top four team throughout the year. Scump this year proved he was extremely good. Combo with Shotzi will be an unbelievable combination. And then Dash and Ilya, obviously some best friends They've been playing together for a while. It can work out great. Uh, but I still don't look at that team and think perennial face threat. I don't. I think they can beat them. But I think face still has the edge in nearly every regard um, when you put it on paper and just think about what the guys are capable of side by side on that stage. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it should be interesting. Like I said, I love Hastro and Hex collaboration. Uh, team solid and it should should have a good future all right so another thing i want to talk about is formal retiring uh this one made me super sad i think formal still had a lot of years left but uh, i'm gonna lay this all out for you guys and explain it from my perspective um so i saw a post from or something formal said a while back in one of his vlogs or something like that and it just stuck with me is that he said when he feels like he is holding his team back from winning championships that is the day that he will retire he will never outstay his welcome uh and you know while i don't agree with that i bet you that's what formal thinks in his head uh, and that's why he decided to sit out um and for formal like this guy's probably still better than over 60 percent of our league he can still go out there and win a championship with the right squad in his mind he's not what he once was and he wants to be that guy that's going out there and getting it done day in and day out um and it can be very stressful playing that many hours of call of duty for or video games for that many years uh so for him uh, i think he was in a similar situation uh, a couple years ago when uh, he got released from optic or when he left optic however that happened and he found himself on luminosity where they had you know some success they won a championship but it just wasn't the same like he wasn't on optic he wasn't happy um and it was very stressful and it was unlikely that he would get back onto optic and he got back onto optic and found himself in a good situation um and it's sort of history repeating itself it's like optic isn't winning what are we gonna do we have to split up somehow so they they split up and now formal's like i don't want to go play for anyone else i don't want to be in any other camp he loves the optic community he loves the fans he loves the people everybody around him it's just good vibes and he's in a good spot now he's not able to compete but for him it's okay because he still has optic behind him he doesn't want to go anywhere else so i think he thought about all those emotions that he went through when he left the initial time and went to lg and he didn't want to experience that again he didn't want to be the guy who went to another team and didn't find his way back so for him it's like you know what screw this i'm just gonna retire right like it's a combination of all these things that i'm feeling now it might sort of be the tipping point where i could still compete but it's time for me to take a break so formal wants to take a year break go ahead by all means man the door will always be open for him He's one of the guys, one of the top players in Call of Duty that has that option. He's like Karma. He can leave and come back if he wants, but he's going to be beloved by everybody in the community and he will be a great content creator and things like that. So I hope the grass is greener for him. And I have nothing but fond memories of this guy. He's an amazing player, one of the most talented, highest earners as you can see on your screen of all time. Some of the most special moments and honestly, the best teammate I've ever had. So I wish him nothing but good fortune and good luck. And, you know, I think that that those are some of the reasons why he decided to make this change um but either way 
uh i think it was a very selfless change for him like he he decided to to sit out for the squad and allow them to go do you know then it, it could have been so easy for him to be frustrated and all the fans to have backed him in certain things like that but you know he he decided to fall on the sword and and i think that it's a respectable move uh so good luck to him i'm sure he'll be grinding war zone so there'll be plenty of formal for you guys to watch but yeah it was a crazy day in call of duty when i read that it was the only time i've been angrier at a player retiring was when i retired myself so I guess that's saying something about the amount of respect I have for this guy. All right, moving on, guys. Here's our final bit of nudes. We have Crim6 is expected to be joining the New York Subliners alongside Clayster and Hydra for the 2022 season. Their fourth is expected to be Neptune, which would require a buyout for the Florida Mutineers. The buyout has been agreed upon, too, but as we all know, nothing can be made official until September 5th. Envoy is another potential fourth, though Neptune is considered the more likely outcome. Again, nothing is official until September 5th, but there are verbal agreements. Expect Crim, Clayster, Hydra, and Neptune to be NYSL starters for Vanguard okay now this is what i call a truth bomb on the timeline i don't even know who unscripted cod is but he's earning my follow bro because that is a bomb um if that's real i mean i like this team a lot uh looking at crim and clay that's the dynamic duo those guys will get it done by any means necessary uh looking at hydra he had an incredible season great smg player comboed with those two he will be unreal and neptune anybody who has a brain who's watched neptune play knows that this guy is an absolute beast and will be a monster in the call of duty scene with the right squad i mean this team is riddled with the smg talent they have the ars to do it um i think that they would be great especially going into a dub dub two game it's such a good game for a roster like this you have the 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 new and the old and the best of both worlds which i think is great um but if it's envoy instead of neptune i think that that is even better because you get those minds to work together uh you get crim clay hydra and envoy envoy can be the bridge for hydra to keep him happy because you know he was frustrated throughout the year at times with clay sir crim can be the neutralizer for clay clay can be the neutralizer for crim and with clay having crim on his team he doesn't have to be the bad guys clay is not okay with being the bad guy to his teammates crim is so it helps clay a lot which is why clay needs that dynamic guys that's what you need to understand why new york was struggling so much is because clay didn't have that veteran player by his side that he could rely on to work with so it was tough for him like he had asim but like asim is still a relatively new guy and it just wasn't great dynamic around for the entire squad so for clay having krim krim becomes that bad guy and clay becomes a lovable veteran guy on the squad for hydra and they, they'll, they'll just bond better guys it's just how it works uh and, and and krim like you love to hate him right it's just how it works with that as well so he, he's okay with being the bad guy as long as the team is getting better you can't help but respect it um so if they get envoy i think it'd be unbelievable like top three team uh with neptune i think they'll still be very good uh it'll just obviously take some time and getting used to uh crim playing with two new guys clay playing with a new guy in neptune uh it'll be a work in progress but i like this squad and if this is new york i think new york has done a hell of a job in the off season um but we don't even know if this is at all true whatsoever this could be completely fake i don't even know how this guy got this information um but he earned my follow so we'll see how that goes uh, but yeah i think that's about all the information that we have guys uh, so yeah i mean that's about it if you guys enjoyed this video make sure you leave a like comment and subscribe we'll be back with more bangers coming up uh like i said i'm coming back i'm bringing the energy and we're having a blast dude so until next time guys it's been real make sure you guys leave a like don't forget to leave a like and i'll see you in the next video i'm out